Hello and welcome to a holiday coding challenge. This coding challenge is a fundraiser for Support P5 this giving season. The Processing Foundation is the uh, foundation that maintains the open source software projects Processing, P5.js, Python mode for processing, processing for the Raspberry Pi, and processing for Android. And if you use any of those tools in your professional life as a student, as a teacher, um, and you have the uh, means and can donate, please do. There's a link in this video's description for how to donate. There's also, you can donate directly on YouTube, right here over, somewhere over there, I think, is where you can donate on YouTube. Uh, all the information about Support P5 is on this post. There are wonderful artworks that you can get as giveaways from Maya Mann, from uh, Kate Hollenbach, uh, from the coding train itself, that's me, and Sai, the coding train community manager, who designed the zine, uh, Saskia Frecke, and more. So please donate. If you, the giveaways are available through this webpage, and we'll, of course, we'll gladly accept your donation through the donate link right here on this page itself. Thank you to Violet who suggested this idea as the holiday coding challenge. This is a kaleidoscope painter that I found online on this website, permadee.com. Incidentally, this website has a lot of wonderful tutorials and other uh, information. Go check it out. But I, we were thinking, could this be used to create a snowflake? Could I make something like this where you could paint in P5 and make a snowflake pattern with six-fold symmetry? Because we all know that snowflakes have six-fold symmetry which would give it some symmetry and then rotate it also around six times. And I think, I'm pretty sure that's what that is happening in that animation that I showed at the beginning. So this should be hopefully pretty beginner friendly. If you're new to coding, I'm gonna do this right here in the P5 web editor. And if you're using the P5 web editor, that's because the Processing Foundation maintains the P5 web editor. It's a project created by Cassie Tarakasian and your donations are helping to support the web editor, the P5 library, and more uh, throughout the uh, 2020 as we go into this new year, new decade. So first let's begin by just creating a program where when I click the mouse, I draw something. And this is actually quite easy to do um, because in the draw loop itself, um, P5 has setup, which will create a canvas. You can see it right there. That's 400 by 400 pixels. The draw function loops over and over again and is always drawing a black background black because of the number zero in the background function. So if I say, if I say stroke, which sets a stroke color, and I say line between mouse X, mouse Y, those are the coordinates where your mouse is actually in the sketch. And I want to draw a line from there to where I previously was, where the mouse previously was. So I could use some kind of variable to keep track of the previous mouse and know the current mouse and update it. But guess what? P5 has that built in for you. And I could say P mouse X for previous mouse X and P mouse Y for previous mouse Y. So if I run this again, <laughs> no, what have I done wrong? Oh, I know what I, <laughs> I've, like, I've forgotten everything that I ever learned in the last like 20 years. <laughs> Look, there's the little line. Do you see it? There it is. I'm drawing the background over and over again in draw. Oh, 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 classic. So I'm gonna move this into setup because I only wanna draw the background once so that now the line always appears. So there I am drawing. So some things I can do, I can say if mouse is pressed, I only wanna draw that line if I am pressing the mouse, that's going to allow me to do things like this. And then we can start to think about the thickness of the line. So I could also, um, there's a lot of different ways I could, I, maybe I'll have that be Perlin noise or something, but I, I'm just gonna make it a little thicker right now. Stroke weight uh, four. Whoops, oh, let me do auto refresh here. So that's thicker. Ah, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's, the speed of how I move the mouse is how thick the line will be. So slower will be thicker, faster will be thinner. I think that makes sense. I think that's probably what that kaleidoscope painter I showed does. I can find the distance between the current mouse and the previous mouse. That's, you know, a, basically a value that indicates to me the speed. How far have I gone on each cycle through draw? And then I can say the stroke weight is map the distance, which could be anywhere from zero, right, if I'm not moving at all, all the way up to, I mean, it could, let's just give it, sort of think about a maximum range of something like 20, and I'm gonna invert that 
uh, 20 down, I'm always going to have a stroke weight of at least one. So um, let's see what happens there. So as I move, hmm. Oh, well, of course, then <laughs> I'm making all these kind of crazy mistakes. Then I also need to actually use the stroke weight variable in the stroke weight function. So if I move really fast, it's really thick. Oh, I kind of want to interpolate that so that it's a little smoother. But this will do. This will do just fine. All right, so here's the thing. I want that, th this, this was like the easy part, right? This is the easy part. I just want to draw using the mouse. Now I need to figure out how to get that symmetry. Maybe we want to use the whiteboard for this for a second. So we have a canvas that's 400 by 400. We can see here this idea of a snowflake with six-fold symmetry. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the angle that's important here is this particular angle, right, which is 60 degrees, I believe. So let's say, for the sake of argument, what I'm, I'm using the mouse to draw over here. So mouse x, mouse y is happening over here. What I want to do is draw the same thing here, and here, and here, and here, kind of rotating along. But I also, I think I want to flip it each time. Um, in this case, it, I think that's going to create, right, you can see that these two are kind of like pointing at each other. So I think uh, there's also going to be some aspect of like flipping it. Uh, no wonder this, by the way, there's a big mistake here. No wonder this was going wonky. Uh, Code Bulletin pointed this out, um, but, and, and also uh, maybe other people in the chat, uh, P mouse Y. That's why it was kind of doing some weird stuff. Yeah, this is much more like what I expected. Let's try this. So just as the simplest way of thinking about it for a second, let's go, i goes from 0 to 6, right? I want to repeat what I'm doing 6 times. I think all this is also going to be easier if I translate to the center. So I'm going to need to use translate and rotate. Translate and rotate. Translate takes as its arguments an x and a y, and rotate takes as its argument an angle. And what this allows me to do is reposition wherever the origin is. So I want the origin to be in the center. I'm going to draw relative to that. But then I can also rotate what I'm drawing to also duplicate it here, rotate to duplicate it here, rotate to duplicate it here. I kind of glossed over that very quickly, but I will refer you to my P5JS transformations video tutorial, which goes through translate and rotate in much more detail. So I'm also going to now create a variable called mx, which is mouse x minus width divided by 2, and my, and pmx and pmy. Ultimately, what I want is to you have, I want the mouse position relative to the center, so the easiest way for me to do that is just store it in separate variables. So I've got the same code here, same thing's happening, it's just everything's now being drawn relative to the center, and I am also drawing it six times. <laughs> but I'm drawing it six times in the same place. I'm going to add some alpha here so we see what's going on. Could I now say rotate by i times 60 degrees? Because what I want to do is first draw it here, then here, then here, and I want to rotate one, two, three, four, five, six times. Oh, and let's set angle mode to degrees. Because I'm thinking in terms of degrees, like 60 degrees. Which I could think in terms of radians, and that would be pi divided by 3. There we go. Now, this isn't exactly doing what I would expect. It's the right idea. Interesting, getting kind of a little bit of a kaleidoscopy feel to it. I think what I actually want is to have bisect each one of these and basically take whatever I'm drawing here and uh, invert it. Uh, how can I draw this? I'm so bad at drawing. Invert it there. Right? I, I need to actually, to create something that feels much more like a snowflake pattern, what I'm drawing essentially is like this 
this element here that's on this side of the snowflake. So I need to flip it over, draw it here, flip it, draw it here. So I actually want to rotate not six times, but 12 times, and each time I want to flip what I'm drawing. So I want to rotate 12 times, and this, by the way, should be, I should have the angle 360 divided by 12. I mean, this is kind of crazy that I'm having these like hard-coded values. There. So this is what I want. This is much more close to what I want. But what I want to see now is also I want to invert every other one. And Simon is making a good suggestion in the chat to draw a line. So I think it actually would be quite useful for me to do that. I'm going to draw more than just the background, just so we sort of see. I want to just draw these lines. Ooh, something weird is going on. I've done something ridiculous. I've made a pretty serious error. I forgot, I mean, I should know this. I should know all of this stuff, but even now, I've done this so many times, I just forget it. <laughs> Transformations, and the word transformation applies to any translation, rotation, or scale. I'm going to use scale in a minute. They're cumulative. So if I say rotate, by 30 degrees, I'm going to do this. So rotate i times 30. Rotate 30 degrees. Now rotate, well, rotate 0. Then i is 1. Rotate 1 times 30 is 30. Then i is 2. Rotate 2 times 30 is 60. Ah! I just want to rotate 30 each time. I was thinking about how far from the beginning I want to rotate, but ultimately, of course, I just want to rotate that, that amount. Let's create a variable. Um, we'll call it symmetry. And we're going to have 12-fold symmetry here, which is really, I really want six-fold symmetry, but each, each six-fold symmetry segment will be symmetrical. <laughs> so I'm going to say angle equals 360 divided by symmetry. I goes from zero to symmetry. And then I'm just going to rotate by the angle. There we go. That's what I'm looking to do. And then the same thing, and this I think can just be a global variable for right now. That way, I can just do the same exact thing here. And we see this is what I was looking to see, something more like this. Now, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We should count. We should get 12. So let me see if I can do that extra flipping. Another transformation function that I can use besides translate and rotate is a function called scale. Now, typically, we think of scale as scaling something bigger or smaller. So for example, if I were to use the ellipse function to draw a circle, and right before that, I were to say scale is 2, that means double the size, or 200%. So it would look, I'm not going to, and in this case, it's double the radius. So I would have something like an ellipse that looks like this. But scale, first of all, you can scale on different axes. So I could say 2 comma 1. And if I did that, it would just scale the horizontal axis but not the vertical would still be the same scale. So my ellipse would look like this. It would be stretched horizontally. Incidentally, I can also apply a negative number to scale. If I apply a negative number to scale, then it's going to draw it in the opposite direction. It's going to invert it, which in the case of a circle doesn't matter because it's symmetrical along the axis. But if I were drawing something like a triangle, then if I had negative 2, I would see the triangle suddenly be drawn like this. But what I thought would make sense is for me to, for any odd, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't know if I want odd or even. For every other one, <laughs> if i modulus 2 is 0 or 1, I'm not sure which one, to invert the scale horizontally. So in that case, say scale negative 1, 1. But once again, this is happening cumulatively. So in this case, maybe what I want to do just to like allow myself to be less confused is to add push and pop so that any rotations or translations or scales that happen within each, and not outside the loop, right inside the loop, for each section are contained. And so in this case, I would want to go back to rotating i times the angle. So now they're not cumulative because I'm saving the transformation state in its original way, scaling by inverting it, drawing, uh, sorry, rotating. Ooh, do I want to scale before rotate? Rotate scale. I think I want to rotate and then flip it. We're going to find out. 
who. Okay. So this is kind of the, what I was expecting, except I'm not actually seeing where I'm drawing because I think this should be one. Yeah, there we go. This is more like what I was expecting. There. Is this a way to draw a snowflake? <laughs> I feel like these are snowflake-like. One, two, three, but in really getting 12, if I just change this now to six, am I, did I overthink the symmetry? And actually this is now gonna give me six-fold symmetry? Yeah. Okay, I overthought the symmetry, I guess. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This has to be, ah, symmetry. All right, I think we've made kaleidoscope snowflakes. Basically, I see. Like, look at this. Rotate by the angle. Push. Pop. And... Draw the line twice, and the second time with it flipped. There we go. Ah, finally. Ta-da! Okay, what we have now, now, uh, Zachary is suggesting, yeah, but I think this would make a lot more sense to give a lot more space now. And here we go. So what I would like to do is, uh, then the next thing I want to do is add a button to save the image. Button, mouse pressed, and um, uh, save, save snowflake. And I'm going to write a little function, save snowflake, that is just going, let's make a clear button also. So we're going to have a save button and a clear button. And with two callbacks, save snowflake and clear canvas. So when I want to save, I just want to save snowflake.png. This will take whatever's in the canvas and send it to the downloads directory. When I want to clear, I just want to draw the background. Reclear the background at zero. I have a pair of unnecessary push and pop. Yeah, so you're right that this push and pop is unnecessary. So let's take that out. It's sort of like having it in there, but you're right that it's unnecessary. Let's think about color and let's think about line thickness. So right now the line thickness is determined by the speed of the mouse. I guess that kind of makes sense, but I wonder if it would actually be better to have the line thickness be controlled by a slider. Um, and we'll have color be automated. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to create a slider that has a range between one pixel and 32, and we'll start it at four. And we'll give it uh, increments of 0 0.1. And then what I'm going to do is say the stroke weight is not the distance anymore but is actually the value from the slider. So I want to actually uh, be able to see this more full screen. So I'm going to go to uh, share, and I'm going to look at this full screen URL and just open that up here. So now, I should, if I'm drawing, that's the line thickness. If I were to make this larger, oh, look at this. So I need the, uh, the mouse is pressed to be only if the mouse is within the canvas. But that's not, not, a, not a huge deal. But if I make it thicker, right, I could do something thicker here, and then I could really be much more intricate about my design. This is kind of awkward to have to like go down to the slider. I don't love this interaction. But this is better. So I'm just gonna fix that bug to only do stuff if mouse X is greater than zero, uh, less than the width. I want to make sure the mouse is in the window. So that should fix, um, that should fix this issue, and I'm going to just refresh over here, where if I'm operating the slider, we don't see any drawing happen. 
Then I, let's use noise for the color. So I'm going to have an, X, an offset start at zero. Um, I'm going to set the color mode to HSB. 255, 255, 255. And then um, what I will do is I will get the hue value to be the noise function of x offset times 255. And we'll set hue uh, and we'll have a saturation and brightness all the way up. So it's, you can see it's always green right now. But now if I were to have x offset change over time, that hue is going to change um, as I draw. So this is my rainbow multicolored uh, uh, snowflake. So I think this is done. I'm going to attempt to design a snowflake now. We're going to see like how good is my snowflake design tool. So right now, if I design the snowflake, a little thicker, and like in the center, and then make it a little like thinner for like over here. A lot of green and blue. If I do this and then I hit save, now I have my snowflake. So I want people to, I want a way of collecting all of these into a nice collection of snowflakes. Let's have the hue uh, move with the sign function. Needs to stay grayscale. So people are really advocating for grayscale. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So I'm going to start out with a sort of a thick line towards the center. And I'm going to use a thinner line to do some nice detail. There. This is my snowflake that I made. Goth snowflakes. People prefer the color. Okay, I give up. This is the end of this coding challenge. Here is a kaleidoscope snowflake drawing generator. Um, I'm sure you can make your own version of this and think about color and the interface in all sorts of different and creative ways. And I hope that you will do that. On the 12th day of coding, my P5 gave to me 12 neural networks, 11 index errors, 10 people posing, 9 for loops looping, 8 fractals forming, 7 sort of sorting, 6 camera switching, 5 gold, ah, 5 golden rings, 4 dripping, Four fucking voids, three of this dots, a two pull request, and a no pointing binary tree. Mwah! Happy holidays!